In today's episode of the Pathfinder Presents podcast, I have an interesting guest here with me today. I'm with Kelly O'Dwyer Manuel, and she's hailing over from the folks over at Axiomatics. She's a senior director at Marketing Communications over there. And uh, basically, what we want to deep dive into is we really want, really want to figure out you know, what um, basically orchestrated authorization is all about. That's what Axiomatic is, is doing, the future of authorization. And we want to really figure out how they're doing it. Who is benefiting the most and how Kelly is thinking about growth for the company. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Of course. Uh, so Kelly, so maybe give us a quick overview. What is our, um, the company all about in your own words? Sure. So Axiomatics has actually been around for some time in the authorization space. Um, so what we do for authorization is as people are trying to get online uh, to their organizations and under they have access to things. So when you or I sign into something, we will automatically have access to the, to the assets, to the applications, to the databases that we use most frequently, email, uh, Salesforce, whatever it is. What authorization does from Axiomatics is ensure that we have within that access, access to the specific elements that we need, nothing more, nothing less. Uh, so it ensures then from, from a consumer perspective that the companies that you're dealing with, that the appropriate employees have the access to your data and information. Nobody extra, nobody, nobody minimal. And that's based on a number of things, including role, where you're accessing or trying to access information from, uh, what time of day, and all of that kind of thing. So it's another layer of security on top of uh, other things such as authentication and all of that, if that makes sense. Yep, that makes a whole lot of sense. Um, now, what do you think, which types of organization benefit the most? Is there like a certain you know, size that they need to have in certain infrastructure? Maybe give us a pointer, like who's a, who's a well-suited client for Axiomatics? Sure. So generally speaking, what's driven the most growth for axiomatics have been customers, larger enterprises and highly regulated industries. So think of government agencies, banks, and other organizations that have to deal with compliance regulations. Um, so in, in Europe, GDPR uh, was a big one, but financial institutions often have additional regulations above and beyond that. So those folks have been have been really the sweet spot for axiomatics in the last few years. Mm -hmm. And do uh, I do we see then sort of you know a CTO uh, picking up the charge and saying we need something in axiomatics? Does it come from the C-suite? Does it come bottom up? Developers identifying this should actually be you know is actually required for them. Where do, where does the pull really come from? Who's the champion within the organizations? So it's been an interesting mix, and that's a really great question, Lucas. Uh, so a lot of times it is the chief information security officer, the CISO, or people leading the identity and access management team. However, as generally speaking, enterprises and, and development teams are looking more to infuse security earlier into the cycle as they develop applications, those teams have had very much an interest in, okay, how is it that we can build authorization and access control into these solutions a lot earlier so it's not tacked on at the end so that it's something that comes uh, into play as the application is developed and, you know, from, from cradle to, to, to right out the door, as it were. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Um, now, what would you say? Because obviously it's, um, for that matter, it's, I mean, it's not an easy product to understand at the first place, right? It, right. It's a complex. There's a lot of parts to it. How do people learn about it? Like what's their journey looking like? What are the client acquisition channels that you guys leverage for people to get in touch with the concept and getting started? That's an excellent question. So, I mean, what Axiom, why Axiomatics has been so successful in, in the past few years is because we've really had um, strong word of mouth, uh, the, the gentlemen who founded our, our companies, Babak Sadiji and Eric Rissanen and team, uh, were very much involved in some of the early uh, identity standards and, and authorization standards uh, that were developed. So it was a lot of, uh, based on the, their reputation, uh, their work, um, word of mouth and, and customers coming inbound to us. What we're doing now as the need for authorization has grown really to be a critical element for a lot of enterprises, particularly with the shift to remote work that was kind of jump-started by the pandemic, but still is very much here to stay, is um, 
we know that customers are looking for something different. They understand that, okay, we need to think about security in a different way. We need to ensure that as folks are working from wherever they are in the world and from whatever device they're on, be it a mobile device or, or a laptop or whatever it is, that they are able to access what they need, that they're not able to access more than that, but that they're also not encumbered by um, our company's access controls. So now we're seeing that customers are accessing axiomatics through LinkedIn. Um, they're finding us through Google. Um, industry analysts have played a really critical role in, in our, uh, our, our market, broader market awareness and have brought customers to us and also um, enabling our sales team to have all of the tools that they need. So uh, some of those con critical content elements and building those assets around key, um, key areas that our customers would be looking for, whether it's cloud native authorization, how to authorize the appropriate access in the cloud, um, identity and access management for customers and all of that kind of thing. So it's a nice blend of amplifying the content that we have and getting content out there to the folks that we really need, as well as uh, definitely broadening uh, our focus and our engagement on critical elements, including SEO, our digital presence on social media elements, and ensuring that our website kind of brings customers in, both the folks that already know what authorization is and have been following the company, so kind of our traditional our traditional channel to bring a customer in, but also folks that may have stumbled onto axiomatics and, and don't quite understand what authorization is, so, so want to kind of understand what that means to their overall uh, cybersecurity and identity and access management mix. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Now, for a product like yours, right, where um, there is a lot for some people to learn right on the website how to really make sure that they fully grasp it how do you think about the website like what role does the website play in their buyer's journey from your perspective the, that's a great question and the website has played a really critical role our digital marketing manager who is an absolute web guru uh, has really been mindful in working with us working with our chief product officer even our ceo to kind of understand okay in these customer conversations that you're having what is it that they're bringing to the to the fore? What are their critical challenges, the pain points? What is the language that they use to speak about their problems so that we can ensure that what is reflected in those conversations appears on our website, that, that it's relatable, that when people read the site, they understand the challenges that we're able to address, the solution that we provide. And it's written in a way that appeals to them, that relates to them so that they can automatically understand what it is we do, but also that we understand what it is they're looking for. And it sounds really simple, right? But so often, particularly uh, in security conversations and with enterprise customers, you'll see that the language that customers are using sometimes isn't quite in line with language that vendors are using. So by taking that kind of customer first approach and having a website that's very clean to look at, that's easy to read, that has a navigation that's understandable, our digital marketing uh, manager has really led the way and been that customer champion um, and it's and he's just a generally fun guy to work with too which which makes it enjoyable and has really upped our game awesome really cool um now as, as a marketer um considering what you were describing the, the role of the page there what have you learned over the years it can be in this role can be in previous roles what have you learned is crucial when it comes to actually you know, turning that interest when they're on the website and actually them getting in contact is there any like tools methods approaches that you've picked up over the years another excellent question so there's a there's a couple of things and when it comes to so so i think the first thing lucas would be that you have to understand what kind of a process is the customer looking at? Where are they usually coming into the organization in that kind of marketing to sales funnel? Is it kind of what I like to call a two-step piece where you have to kind of educate them as to why this is a need that they need to solve and then why uh, Axiomatics or, or the, the company in particular is uniquely positioned to solve that? Or is there a lot of general market awareness about the challenge in particular, and then you really have to be laser focused on why it is your organization provides exactly what they need and can address their use cases in the very best way. Mm -hmm. um, I, I find that sometimes finding that sweet spot is very difficult because if in particular it's that kind of two-step process, you really almost have to have two separate marketing streams. One for customers who are very much more informed, understand the unique value proposition and are willing to kind of jump right in lower down in the funnel, but you also have to provide 
that kind of tender loving care um, for the folks that don't quite understand the market and, and really need that extra information to understand why it is this is a need that they, that they really need to solve uh, to meet their business requirements, both now and then stuff that's, that's going to come at them down the road. So that's been the biggest learning for me. And that requires, I think, a really strong missed mix of both general external communication, so leveraging kind of media outreach to give to give sales air cover, as it were, so that there, there is a broader understanding and market awareness of who you are and what you do, uh, as well as, as critical content elements that hit those two levels. So things that are higher level to appeal to the folks that, that aren't in the door yet, and then the things for those folks who are really ready to buy and understand what it is. Uh, it's super interesting how you distinguish uh, sort of how people are just at different stages in their journey, right? Some are advanced, some are getting to know you guys. And then uh, very quite, quite interesting um, in how you're describing that. Um, I would like to switch gears because we talked about sure. what you guys are doing. We talked about um, uh, growth and the journey a little bit. What would you say, um, you as a marketer, there's so much content out there. What is your favorite go-to place to research and educate yourself as a marketer? Like, because people struggle a bit with that, you know, there's so much content, what do you personally like to do? So there's a couple of things that I like to do. And I mean, I come from a very strong communications background. So my go-to always, always is to leverage in the industry analyst community. So the folks at Gartner and Forrester who are talking to both vendors, but also end users all the time. But I always read it with the lens of, they understand what these challenges are now, but they're very much looking to, okay, let's connect this to where you need to go. So it gives you good insight to say, okay, this is where the market is now, but this is also where their market is going to need to be. So how can I align myself as a marketer in the broader, our broader marketing and go-to-market efforts to not only address kind of what I call the now term or things we absolutely critically need to, to execute on right now, but also how can we make sure that that positions as well as an organization that's going to continue to be relevant uh, and attractive to the market for the future. So that's kind of the first thing. And the second thing, though, is I'm always keen to know what other organizations are doing. And sometimes that's looking at our direct competitors. I mean, I think most of us do that to, to understand what other folks are doing, but also generally speaking, who are some folks that are great examples that you look at their, their website or you read some of the things that they're writing or how they're interviewed and you say, gosh, they're really doing this right. This is really interesting. Um, so you take, you know, and for me, that's a, that's a mix of a lot of different organizations. Um, I see in an earlier podcast, you, you talk to the great team at Massive and they're doing a phenomenal job when it comes to putting everything behind SEO. So I've learned a lot from them. Um, you know, I'm being Canadian. I'm, 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 I'm always kind of looking to those companies. So NAC, another great company that's done a lot from the marketing automation standpoint. And then some of the broader folks, I'm a, I'm a Dell alumna. So looking at Dell Technologies and what they do as well. So it's a mix of all of those things. I realize that was really long, but I'm, I'm, I love learning new things. And I, I, I think there's so much that you can learn on a daily basis. So I try to read as much as I can. Awesome. No, very cool. That gives uh, definitely a lot of insights how you figure out and, and find high high quality information for yourself. Now, what I would love to do is right, um, do a little bit of time travel. Right, let's go back to the very first day of you joining um, at the new role back then with uh, Axiomatics. What's the one advice you would give yourself for for that journey? I think it's to breathe and take a step back particularly when you're talking about a company that's smaller. Um, and I love that Axiomatics is very family first. Everybody knows one another. It's great. But you, there's so much to be done. And there's so much that you want to do, more importantly, that sometimes you can feel overwhelmed. So having the, you know, if I could say to Pass Kelly on the first day, okay, don't try to, to use this, this analogy, boil the ocean, as it were take a step, understand, okay, what is it that is really critical to broader market awareness and to bringing in revenue and stay focused on those things. Everything else will come as we grow, as we build, as we achieve our goals, but stay focused on the core things that really, that really matter and don't, you know, don't enable, allow yourself to kind of try to go in 15 directions. You can't do everything. We're a lean, mean team. We do a lot, but we, we try to stay focused on, on what's critical to the business. Very cool. Kelly, I really appreciate you took time with us today to be a guest on, on Pathfinder Presents. I want to give you the very last word. If somebody would be forgetting all that we discussed uh, about <laughs> axiomatics today, what's the one thing that they should remember? 
I think the one thing that they should remember um, is likely all organizations are doing some form of authorization right now. Try to understand as much as you can or an orchestrated approach where it's across the organization is the very best one. Um, and yeah, check us out. You need to be thinking about securityaxiomatics.com. Thanks a lot for being a guest on Platform Presents. Thank you again for having me. This was a great conversation.